text any. Well, if you're calling something always like with false, and sometimes and one times with true, then you might as well just omit this thing and only call it when you would have called it with true. Okay, so that's kind of just an, an optimization. It's often whenever you pass a Boolean flag, you know, you can encode that by calling or not calling that method. So we can get rid of this argument. So what we get is this pair of interfaces. Now let's look at this thing for a second. So for innumerables, when you um, call disposable, when you call dispose on the disposable, you tell the collection, I'm not interested in kind of, you know, getting more values from you. So it's like telling the collection I'm done. In some sense, this thing is here the same. So when you subscribe to an, an observable collection, you get back a disposable, and when you call dispose on that, it's like canceling the subscription, okay? So it's, it's the same kind of operational behavior. So we've kind of, you know, dualized the push and pull, but we've left invariant the way that you can cancel, you know, interacting with that collection. So that's kind of nice. Okay. And then, of course, you say, Eric, what are you making a big deal? Category theory, shit like that. You know, they, uh, the design pattern book like 50 years ago, you know, <laughs> mentioned these things. <laughs> the funny thing is that, if, if you look in the back of the book uh, to, at the related patterns, these two interfaces are completely unrelated. Okay? They're not even mentioned that they're related. Whereas in reality, these are super deeply related. Right? No two more interfaces on, on the planet and the universe are more um, intimately connected than these guys because they're connected by mathematics. Okay? But these guys, you know, I think this book is crap. <laughs> I cannot trust these guys anymore. <laughs> okay, but the Java guys, if people often say that's why I'm not, you know, recording. Don't net, you know, it's just Java where you know main starts with lowercase instead of uppercase and so on. And you know what? The Java guys had this stuff already in Java one. Okay, they had like you know observer and observable and now they have iterable and iterator. But you see here that they didn't derive these interfaces, you know, using math because you see it's a mess. Look at this. Oh. And then here's the way they do deletion and so on. So, um, you know, it's, it's good. They are stuck with this mess and we can kind of do something nice. But, you know, I have to admit, you know, it's like C Sharp and Java, right? We're doing the nice things by looking at their stuff and cleaning it up. <laughs> so, what did, what, what did we get? Well, we have now two interfaces. We have enumerable enumerator and observable observable uh, observer. This one is for interactive programs, right? This is where you kind of pull from the environment, and this is where the environment pushes at you. And this is what you can use for asynchronous and event-based programming. What is an asynchronous program? Well, that's a program that's a collection that has at most one value, okay? And what is your mouse? Well, this mouse is a collection that kind of, you know, keeps pushing mouse moves at me. So this is a collection, guys. It's a collection of mouse moves. And um, everything is a collection. And uh, that's good for, like, everybody ends up in a database company. Sun is now with a database company. I work for SQL Server. Why is that? Because everything is data. Everything is databases. I don't know. Um, but the great thing is here is from this duality, because enumerables are both monads and co-monads, we get that observables are monads. Um, so, and that's means that I can now write link queries over these kind of asynchronous and event-based programs. So, let's uh, show some code. Um, I haven't seen a lot of code um, yet today, so let's uh, kind of, you know, show some code. First, I have to tell you how to turn a .NET event into a collection, okay? So the way to do that is, uh, again, I'm stealing some Java syntax here. Kind of re I still like Java because it has anonymous inner classes. That's something that C Sharp doesn't have, sadly. Um, and in this case, it's really handy. So if I have some class that has an event here, this is the way you say this in C Sharp. It is an event, and this is the type of the event handler. Now I need to return that, turn that into a collection of events, of event values. So what do I do? Well, I create a new observable that when I subscribe to it with an observer, 
I take the delegates to the on next method of the observer. I add that as the event handler, you know, normal C sharp. And then I return a disposable that when I call dispose, will remove the event handler. Okay? So nothing special. I, I add an observer that will add, you know, a delegate to this, and when I call dispose on that thing, it will remove it. Okay, so this is how you would write it traditionally. You have to create a handler, you can add it, but then you have to hold on to the handler to remove it. In this new thing, I say, give me the event stream, and then I just can subscribe to that, and if I want to um, unsubscribe, I just call the dispose method on the, on the detachment. All right? Simple? All right. Let's do drag and drop. So, in order to do drag and drop, I need to track my mouse, but I need to track my mouse, not only, I don't need to track the positions, but I need to track how far my mouse has moved, right? Because that's the dragging, okay? So if you look at the mouse events that I get, well, they get like, you know, all kind of stuff but only the X and the Y coordinates, whereas I'm really interested in the difference between the X and Y coordinates, because I have to, to drag my mouse. So that's, that's a kind of little uh, problem that we need to solve. So let's uh, write some code here. And I don't know how many um, of you are familiar with link, but just think of think SQL here, right? Just a SQL query. So if I, Look at my mouse, I, I say, you know, there's some control I want to drag, and I say, give me the mouse down events as a stream, okay? And then I just write a query, I say, for each mouse down in that collection, just return true. So what this is, this is a collection that whenever you click on your mouse down, it will fire true when the mouse goes down. And whenever the mouse goes up, it fires False. Oh, he gets the quarter. That was for Neil. Okay. I've turned my mouse button. Uh, that's not uh, that's not a good trade, but yeah. But anyway, so here you see that I, I can you know have now turned my mouse into one of those push collections that fires you know bullions at me, and now I can take my mouse clicks by just merging non-deterministically merging these two event streams, okay? And now, you know, I wouldn't know how to do this, uh, you know, if I would write this code kind of directly, right? Just like, you know. The other great thing that you can do is people often talk about, like, you know, when they want to do testing with mock objects and whatever, dependency injection, oh, my head hurts, you know, it's like, I don't understand all that stuff. But here, it's easy, because the fact that this collection here, you know, comes from this control, does it really matter? If I want to test this, I just put an array of booleans, and I say two observable, and now I have like a stream of events that comes from, you know, something that I own instead of from some process. So this makes testing kind of trivial. So you don't need all this mock objects, dependency injection. That's just for people that are, that don't know math. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so now let's look at the mouse moves. Mouse moves had all these kind of things, but I only want to get the X and the Y coordinates. So I say, for each mouse move in the mouse move stream, just select the X and the Y coordinates. So this guy is now a stream of X and Y coordinates. And now do some functional programming tricks. How do I find the deltas between two subsequent mouse moves? Okay. Think a little bit about that. How would you do that? Well, if you're a functional programmer, you say, Oh, that's easy. I take my mouse moves, I duplicate my mouse moves, I drop the first one, and I just kind of, you know, subtract each of them. Right? Easy. So that's what I do. Give me all the mouse moves, drop the first one, zip it with mouse moves itself, now I get each pair of subsequent moves, and I just take the, di the difference. So this guy, mouse this, is now a stream of X and Y deltas. Okay? And now, drag and drop is easy. I say, for each mouse click, since that was a stream of Boolean, let me call it left down, track the mouse differences only when the left button is down. So it's like a join. If you look at SQL, I'm just doing a join. I'm joining 